I do thank God. I pray that you are thanking God this morning for the opportunity uh, to gather together again to praise his holy name in this place. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for those that are visiting with us today. I know you've been acknowledged, but I just want to say welcome to Grace Place Church. And we pray, it is our prayer, that if, whether this is your first time or your 15th time visiting with us, that if you are without a church home, you will prayerfully consider making Grace Place Church uh, your church. And most importantly, if there's anyone in this building today that has never given their lives to Jesus Christ, that you would firmly uh, be moved by the Holy Spirit to make that decision today uh, to be able to accept him as your Lord and Savior and to receive the forgiveness and the reconciliation to God that he and he alone can give because God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and have eternal life and so most importantly if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ we pray that you would make that decision I pray that uh, whether it was through a, a, a hug before the service or a hug after the service or some warm greeting or the songs that the praise band just sang or even through a spoken word that you would definitely have an encounter uh, and experience God and so today I'm also thankful um, because this is not going to be your traditional worship service, uh, but we're still going to worship and we're still going to give thanks. But today we give an opportunity as we go into this Thanksgiving season to recognize um, the entire church. Amen? Amen. In October we had Pastors Appreciation Month and every October we always give appreciation to the pastors. But the pastors could not do what they do if it were not for the body. And so as we enter into this season of Thanksgiving, last week we gave thanks for our veterans and for our first responders. And so this week, Grace Place Church, we're giving thanks for you. For every individual who is a member of this church, for every individual member uh, who by your smiles, by your hugs, by your prayers, uh, by your words of encouragement, make Grace Place what it is. And then in a few minutes specifically, we're going to recognize those individuals who uh, through their constant and consistent, constant and consistent, I guess those are the same things, through their constant and consistent, see how consistent and constant that is? Through their constant and consistent <laughs> love and uh, 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 devotion to this church and to our God, uh, they work and help this church to function and do what it does. And so um, that is what we're going to do today. So somebody say short message. You're going <laughs> you're gonna to be amazed uh, and marvel at the great work that God has done today uh, because we're going to have a short message. But we do, we just want to take the time to, again, thank those who enable this church to be what it is. Um, and so, again, it may not be your traditional church service, but I certainly think it is appropriate to recognize and acknowledge those on the team who... Uh, contribute to making Grace Place what it is. In fact, for a few minutes this morning, I want to talk to you on that subject. So um, it takes teamwork to make the dream work. It, it, it takes everyone to make church what it is. In fact, um, uh, uh, like I said, I don't think I'm far off the mark in doing this. Um, it, it's biblical. In fact, uh, the Apostle Paul would certainly agree with me. If you read his various epistles, in each one of his epistles that he addresses the church, he gives a salutation, he gives some form of blessing, but then he also acknowledges either in the salutation or at the close of his meeting, specifically those who have labored in the gospel or in the ministry of building up the kingdom of God and helping the church to flourish. And so that's what we're going to do today. And our text is coming from uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, excuse me, verses uh, one through three. That's why I say a short message. We got three verses. I'm going to talk about them. And then we're going to talk about uh, some of the things, some of the different ministries. I, I hope I cover them all uh, that, that work, uh, ministries and auxiliaries that work towards making Grace Place what it is. Everybody got the scripture? I think Karen will put it up there. Uh, First Thessalonians one through three. Um, and she has it up there. And if you want to look for it in your Bible, uh, feel free to do that. But that is where our text is coming from. And the first Thessalonians, this is the Apostle Paul talking again to the church, and he says, Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we always thank God for you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So again, we're just talking about how it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And again, 
in, in this letter to the believers at Thessalonica after this short introduction telling who the letter is from. It's from Paul and Silas and Timothy are with me. He immediately acknowledges or goes into thanksgiving for the team who were making the dream of proliferating the gospel, of building up the kingdom of God and strengthening the church uh, possible. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but I wonder do we ever stop and, and think about all of the cogs that make the wheel run as it relates to the body of Christ and specifically to this particular congregation. Paul understood that uh, it took more than him to accomplish the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so he acknowledges and remembers these individuals. Uh, Paul says, I, I, I want to thank God for you all continuously and pray for you all as I remember your work of faith, your labor of love. Karen, you can put those points up there and your enduring hope. See, she didn't even have the points up because she doesn't believe I'm going to finish earlier. But don't <laughs> tell her, I'm going to really finish this thing earlier. Paul says, we thank you for your work of faith, your labor of love, and your enduring hope. What is Paul talking about? He says, I'm acknowledging those in the church who may not be as, as prominent or in the front scenes or in the limelight, but nonetheless are vital, are instrumental to the church being what it is. And the reason that we're taking the time to acknowledge the individuals who make up this church and the contributions you make to this church is because many of you all do what you do so consistently and so faithfully, but because you're not up on the stage every Sunday like the praise man or the pastor, or you may not be over a particular ministry, sometimes you do what you do so well that it's possible for the church to take you for granted or not even understand how many people it takes just to pull off a worship service. And I, I, I say that loosely, but I don't mean it in any irreverence. I mean it sincerely. See, I'm standing up here in front of you and you see all this. <laughs> hey, that's a good Sunday. It was worth coming to church, wasn't it? Amen. If, if nobody should have shouted my wife. Look, she over there laughing. I'm like, if anybody should have been saying amen, it should have been her. She's over in the corner cracking up. I hope nobody got that on video. But, but you get to see all of this. But watch this. Because somebody is working the sound. And somebody had to work on those three points that are up there. And I can come here and so casually say, Karen, put the three points up or put the sermon up or put the. But, but somebody, Karen, had to work on that and put that together. The songs that we sing and, and, and that we don't want to sing when the praise man is up here trying to lead us into worship. Somebody has to pray over what's going to be sung and then put that song together and work on the sound. See, the praise band, I know they sound good and they, they play so beautiful. Don't you agree? Get the Earth, Wind, and Fire album. You'll know where that analogy came from. But, but, but you see them, and I know they're good and they're gifted. Uh, Brother Rudy, Brother Keith is back there. Him and Brother David, they play so well, but they rehearse. They spend hours of their day and hours of their evening coming to rehearse and sing, and somebody has to put those songs into words so that we can sing along, and somebody does the bulletins, and, and somebody had to pay the bill, and uh, your offerings to keep the lights on, and so you get where I'm going? There's more than all this. <laughs> I know that's a lot. <laughs> but there's more than all this making Grace Place Church, and so it is appropriate for us to stop and take time to acknowledge those who labor in this church. Paul says, and it is what we're doing today, he says, we recognize you and we thank God for you and we continually pray for you, especially, watch this, as we remember the teamwork and cooperation that you bring to the church to make us what we are. The ability to make, in our case, in our particular circumstance, Grace Place the church that God God desires it to be the church that exalts God and all we do advances his kingdom and edify his body the ability to do that does not rest with one individual but it takes the entire body what's the old prophet uh, what's the old African proverb it takes a village to do what raise, raise the children well it or raise a child raise the children <laughs> I guess if it takes a village to raise a child it takes villages to raise children I don't know, but anyway, strike that from the video, Karen. Um, but it if it takes a village to raise a child, then it certainly takes the entire body of Christ to make the body of Christ function. And in Grace Place in particular, if we are going to be effective at being the church that Christ desires, that Christ designed, and the church that Christ will benefit and bless, um, then the reality of it is that we also understand that it takes an entire team to do this. And so Paul says, I acknowledge your work of faith. Let's break these three down and then we're going to, I'm going to give you some 
uh, descriptions of what we do here at Grace Place, and then we're going to pass out these certificates, and we're going to eat. Work of faith. He says, I acknowledge and remember you in your prayers for your work of faith. Why do people do what they do? Why does the praise band come and sacrifice their Wednesday evenings and their Sunday mornings before you even get here to have Bible study and to do what they do and to lead us into worship? Because it is a work of their faith. Why, why do the Sunday school teachers study their lessons? Why does Priscilla come up with a curriculum for the children? Why are those who are working in the nursery, even uh, with our youngest members, our babies and our toddlers, starting to work that early age at discipling them because of their work of faith? It is the faith in Jesus Christ, the belief that they have in God, that what they do matters and what they do contributes to the building up of his kingdom. Jesus said in his word, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you give somebody even a cup of cold water in my name, you will not lose your reward. And I don't want to take his words out of context, but what he said there is it does not matter how small you think what you do does it matters it contributes I, I don't want to get too far off track because I said I'm going to be finished with this message in a hurry but watch this sometimes it is the least things that hold the church together so you got all this up here, but 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 there are some little things that can be done. If you came in here this morning and it was too hot or too cold because somebody didn't set the thermostat or somebody didn't check, it's little things. Uh, um, I don't want to start calling people out because I know I forget somebody and not this church, but other churches may get offended and say, well, he didn't call me for what I did. So again, we're acknowledging everybody, but just on last week when we had this cold snap, and 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 I know this head is real big, but, but the brain in it is not always functioning the way it should be, and so I knew this cold snap was coming and I didn't think anything about it and right before I was about to go home uh, it was about 3.15 and Brandy came in the office and she said pastor did, you know it's going to get cold and I said yeah and she said we got all these spigots that need to be covered up lest they freeze and burst now you got all this <laughs> up here ready to give you the word of God but imagine how difficult it would have been for me to come in here and give you the word of God if you had to ice skate across the parking lot because somebody forgot to turn off the sprinkler system and cover up those spigots. So it, it's sometimes the things that we take for granted that help the church function and progress and move forward. And so that's why we want to remember you and we remember and thank God for your work of faith. And let me just say this. We work because of our faith not to gain it. We don't work because we're trying to gain salvation, because we're trying to gain blessings from God. We work because he has already freely bestowed those things upon us. And it is our service and our love and our loyalty that causes us to do this, which moves us into our next point. Paul says, not only do I recognize your work of faith, but I also recognize your labor of love. And that word labor means just that labor. In fact, you just, oh, she's back. I thought I saw you get up and walk out. I was going to say, you just saw my, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not jinxing you. She's like, don't say it, don't say it. I've been at the hospital enough. But when you see my wife get up and walk out, maybe I just had a vision. I'm so holy. <laughs> When you see her get up and walk out sometimes in the middle of the service, it's because what? Somebody has gone into labor. And that is the word that he used here. It means an intense toiling or a burden or a strain. And so Paul says, not only do we remember your work of faith, but we also remember your labor of love to serve the church, to build it up, to make sure that all cylinders or at least most cylinders are striking and hitting. It takes a labor of love. And every one of you all in here that contribute, I don't care how big or small, to Grace Place Church, we hope and we pray and we believe that you do it because it is a labor of love. It is not always easy. So Sometimes it is tenuous, ain't it, Brother Buddy? Brother Buddy, I, I see Brother Buddy. In fact, I want Brother Buddy to come to my house after church because I see Brother Buddy at that sink in there washing dishes more than I see him doing a lot of stuff. And that is a labor of love. It's not always easy. It's not always convenient. Watch this. And I'm sure he would say amen, but he's too holy and, and humble to say that. But he would say amen because sometimes it is a labor because people take it for granted or don't even say we see you and we appreciate the fact that you stayed after church to wash the dishes. Watch this that we ate off of yes. that you say to watch watch this our children and you haven't been in the service and we don't know how long because you're out watching our children while we come in here to fall asleep on the pastor <laughs> a labor somebody said no way I'll pay you after service amen I'll, I'll, your check is in the mail sister Judy we planned that 
It is a labor of love. We do these things, watch, because we love God. And when we love God, we love his people and we love the community. And so we serve whether people thank us or not. Now, don't get me wrong, which is why we're doing this appreciation. Even though we don't do it for pats on the back, everybody needs to be encouraged and validated from time to time. Everybody needs to know, I appreciate you and I thank you. Whether you, all this or whether you gave a cup of cold water, whether you preached a sermon or taught a child, or you just put toilet tissue in the dispensers in the washroom, we want you to know this morning that we appreciate you because if it were not for you, we could not function as we do. Paul says, finally, not only do you work and serve out of a genuine faith in God and because of your love in God for others, but you persistently do it because of the enduring hope that you have in Jesus Christ. I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. Don't tell anybody. The people in here who serve, that's all of you. That's just about everybody in here. The people that serve do it consistently and persistently. And that's why I say I'll let you in on a little secret because they're not going to tell you because they're too holy. I'm trying to get there so I don't mind telling their secrets. <laughs> if we had a dollar for every time those who served felt like giving up, said they weren't going to do it anymore. I just, Brother Keith, I'm not, I know you haven't said this, I'm just talking about those other churches. I, I, I can't give up another one of my Wednesday nights to come and practice a song. I, I can't give up another Sunday of watching other people's kids when I'm missing out on the word and I need to be fed myself. I'm not going to come and clean this church another week because I'm just, if, if we had a dollar for every time somebody felt that way, we could hire everybody to do. I know you're not going to say it because you all are so nice. You're not going to say, that's me, Pastor. I was there this morning. I was writing my letter. But then the next week after we said we weren't going to do it anymore, we're right there. Right there in the trenches. Right there still pouring out. Why? Because Paul says it is an enduring hope because of our hope in Jesus Christ, because of the hope that somehow this cup of cold water will matter to somebody, that in some way I'm pleasing my Lord, we do these things. And so Paul took the time to recognize and appreciate those who helped him build up and accomplish the ministry. When you talk about people in the Bible, probably next to Jesus Christ in the New Testament, especially the Apostle Paul is one of the most prominent figures, but Paul never fails in any of his epistles, in any of his teachings, to stop and say, I have to acknowledge and recognize those people who make it possible for me to be able to do what I do. And that's what we're doing this morning at Grace Place Church. Allow me to simply share, because again, sometimes we take so much for granted that we don't even know what's going on in our own church in, in terms of what makes it work. Kind of like me and my car. And I hate to say this, Karen, you probably need to stop the tape from rolling because I don't want to give away any of my cool points. And I know I'm up here all this. <laughs> but I'm not the most mechanically inclined. I told you all before, I got a, a tool belt at home, and my wife lets me keep one tool in at the Yellow Pages. <laughs> So I can call folks. So I can call folks when stuff break down. The little stuff, buddy, that she does let me put together that she think I can handle. She's smart enough not to go near it. <laughs> She'll compliment me from a distance. Pastor, though, bro, Calvin, uh, D sweetie, those, those bookcases look real nice, but I ain't gonna go near them because I know how you put stuff together. <laughs> I'm not the most mechanically inclined, brother boy. So when I hop in my car. I, I, I'm mechanically inclined enough to know that if the, if, if the needle says it's close to E to put some gas in it, if the oil light comes on, I know how to put that. That's about as good. I know how to check my tire pressure. But that's about as good as it gets. In fact, right now, uh, when I turn on my heat in my car, one side on my wife's side, on the passenger side, blows out cold air. That I, my, my, the length of my mechanical expertise would say there's a problem somewhere. Because it's blowing out heat on my side and it's blowing out cool on her side. And when she sits in there, she's freezing. Now that's a problem, but it's really not a problem because you heard me say my side blows out heat. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not in my car that much, but the more she rides in my car, I have, my point is that I don't have to know everything about a car. I just get in it and take it for granted until something breaks. And again, the reason that we're acknowledging you this morning, Grace Places, because sometimes we have a tendency to overlook things until something breaks. Let me just say this, and then I'm going to get into this, and we're done. This is just to help, and if you're here visiting from another church, you can take it back and use it over there. 
we need to also be careful because just as easy it is as it is to overlook or take people for granted, we have a tendency in the body of Christ to only notice people when something goes wrong. If Karen doesn't have a slide in time, we say, why didn't she have that together? And, and, and we'll fuss for three days about the fact that one slide came up out of order. But watch this. All the other times when she did it without fail and nothing went wrong, how many times do we say thank you? I'm just using her as an example. We'll come in and Sister Sheila and Brother Buddy got a meal for us every Wednesday, every Sunday. But the minute that they don't have time to cook, we went, no eggs this morning? <laughs> No, the, the, the 364 days of the year that they had eggs and toast and hot dogs and I don't even know what they have in there. I'm just talking about my menu last night, but 364 days, or uh, they're not 364 Sundays, well, I will change that. Uh, 52 Sundays and 52 Wednesdays, uh, 50 days, they have everything together and on the one day that they don't. So I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about those other churches. Learn to be appreciative and as quick as we are to point fingers when something is wrong, we ought to be just as quick to acknowledge and go up to people and say, hey, we see you and we salute what you bring to this church. Real quickly, let me run through these things and we're going to give out our announcements. It's still 1048, Miracle Sunday. I've never finished at 1048. These are just some of the things that are going on in Grace Place. And like I say, some of us know some of these things, some of us know all of these things, and some of us know very little about what it takes to make this church go forward. And uh, let me just give this disclaimer. We try, we try to meticulously make sure that we didn't leave out any ministry, any auxiliary, any committee. But because so many of you do so many things inadvertently, we probably are going to miss something. So let me apologize now and say if we missed your group or if we missed you individually, charge it to our head and not our heart. It is not because we're intentionally trying to leave anybody out. And if we miss you, please come up to me after service and say, Pastor, you forgot about me. You forgot about this then we will make sure that you are acknowledged and that you get a certificate as well. But these are just some of the things that we've got going on. And you hear me all the time talking about our purpose or our vision is to advance God and all we do, exalt his kingdom and edify his body. So I put all of these things into three different categories, advance, edify, uh, I'm sorry, ed, uh, exalt, advance, and edify. So when we talk about exalting God, these are the ministries and areas that help us do what? Exalt him, worship him, lift him up, starting with uh, the clergy, myself, uh, Pastor Travis, Pastor Dunn, uh, uh, or, or Minister Dunn, Minister Frank Page. These are the clergy that speak and teach God's words that help to disciple and nourish us and build us up in spiritual maturity. And we also care and watch over the flock that God has put in our charge. The deacons in this church do the same thing. They are caregivers to the church. They they help and compensate for the fact that the pastors cannot be everywhere, but they keep in touch and keep their ear to the ground about what's going in on the church and how we can better minister to the flock that God has given us. Amen? Amen. That's the clergy and the deacons. By the way, um, we're going to give everybody in the church because we did it, but I said the church doesn't know about it, and that's my fault. But every member in this church has a deacon assigned to them. Amen? We're trying to keep people from falling through the cracks. So if we don't see you after a couple of Sundays or if you're sick or what have you, your deacon will get in contact with you. Watch this. Even if you're not sick and even if you're not falling through the cracks, every now and then your deacon should be reaching out to you and just saying, hey, I want you to know I'm your deacon and I'm checking on you to see how you're doing. That way we're making sure nobody falls through the cracks. Now, if you haven't got those phone calls, don't beat them up all at once because we haven't given you the list. But they know what their responsibilities are. Let me move on uh, so I can keep my word. The praise band. Amen. They help us exalt God. They prepare weekly to prepare our hearts through song to encounter God that we might worship him. Which is why when they stand up here and they're singing and they're ministering to the Lord, they are also ministering to us. They are also not up here performing for our approval, but they're trying to encourage us to worship. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. When they stand up here, they're not performing for your critique, yay or nay, or wait, I did it backwards, but... <laughs> Yay and nay. Uh, I don't play that game where they do that. But anywho, uh, yay and nay, but they are trying to help us set the atmosphere for worship so that we might worship God in spirit and truth. That's exalting God. When we get into the areas of advancing his kingdom, these are ministries and, and uh, events that help us reach um, others, even those outside the body of Christ. Coffee County Jail Ministry. Every other Tuesday, uh, we go out to the jail and share uh, to the Coffee County Jail to share the word of God with men and women who have
have found themselves on the other side of the law, who find themselves for whatever reason incarcerated because they need the gospel brought to them too. We don't get paid for that. We don't do that to try to bring them into this church, even though that would be a blessing when they got out if they came here. But we simply go because we know that Jesus went into various places to save souls. And so we take the gospel out there. Christian mission, every second Saturday, uh, Brother Buddy and Sister Sheila and others go out and, and, and uh, provide a meal and a word of encouragement for those men and women who are in a recovery program trying to get their lives back on track. Why do we do that? Because this is the work of the church. This is our job to advance his kingdom. And we advance his kingdom by taking the word outside of the four walls of the church. And so we have people to do that. Manor House. Every week, Tuesday and Wednesday, they are open serving and giving food and clothing to those in the Coffee County area that are in need. They do that without getting paid. There's a bevy of volunteers headed up by Miss Brandy, and every week they do that. And I say Tuesday and Wednesday, but there's more to it than that that goes into it because they're here on Monday uh, driving out to the food bank and coming in and putting food up and, and making sure that they have enough to meet the needs of the people. And there's so many, including you all, who even bring food and clothing to the the manor house to keep that ministry going. Revealing God's love. That is a ministry that Sister Stacy Luck heads up and many people here uh, go out and they minister to those at Teaser Strip Club. Amen. And, and believe it or not, not here, but shh. Some of those other churches got a problem because they have the audacity to go out to a, a strip club and minister to people. But the last time I checked, when Jesus came into the world, he said, I came to seek and save those that are lost. And so sometimes you have to go to where they are. I don't know about anybody else. I like fish. I told you, you got all this up here. I like fish. But every now and then, you got to go where my fishermen at, Brother Chuck Hicks and some others in here. So every now and then, you got to go where the fish are. Because the last time I checked, I know you can drive through McDonald's and get it on a bun with a piece of cheese and some of that special tartar sauce to filet of fish but every now and then you got to catch your own and so thank God for those who are willing to go out and minister and not only do they minister to the young ladies out there but have even had an opportunity to make an impact on some of the bouncers out there so we recognize that ministry. Uh, neighborhood outreach this summer we kicked off for the first time at least since I've been here an opportunity to go out into the various neighborhoods and just love on people and show them the love of God and we did it in a very peculiar way this year we did it with hula hoops and basketballs and soccer balls and we just went out and I remember some people not you know I'm just talking about what I'm talking about some people who were like doubting Thomas what well, that doesn't make any sense why aren't we taking tracks and we took some tracks too and we shared our faith with certain individuals but it was just about immersing ourselves into the community and letting them know that we love them and we're here and somebody said pastor why are we taking hula hoops and the back and, and it's funny because they say why we and the people that said that didn't go <laughs> Ooh, pastor you telling on people why are we going out? That doesn't make any sense. And I told them, I said, when they see all this out there in the hula hoop, I guarantee you somebody going to come, if nothing else, to just make sure that the parking lot don't tilt. But anyway, so we did our first outreach ministry, and we're going to pick that back up where we started to emerge into the community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we talked about exalting, we talked about advancing, and now let's talk about edifying, which is the bulk of the ministries and auxiliaries and volunteers in this church. These are ministries and auxiliaries that support and help the church to function to be able to do the ministry and, and, and move toward the mission and vision that we have stated for ourselves. There's the audio visual media ministry. Now I'm, I'm giving these simply in alphabetical order. We're gonna come up with some fancier names. Uh, Sister Karen, Brother Tim, uh, Jason, all of those of you who work in media and auto, we, we gonna come up with something really fancy. You know, I don't know what to call it, but for sake of uh, <laughs> alphabetical order. We said audio, visual, media, ministry. These are the people who weekly ensure we have videos, uh, the birthday and anniversary pictures, announcements, sermon text, videos, and sound. And again, without them, you wouldn't be able to hear me. And so what they do is invaluable. They are often here before anybody else, making sure that the sound system is set up. They're often here long after we're gone, and even on days that we're not here, making sure that things are ready for Sunday service and any other events that we have going on. Bulletins. We have a bevy of people who volunteer, people who print out, uh, type up and print out the bulletins, people who prepare and fold the bulletins, people who stand at the door and greet you with them. All of that takes work and effort. Effort. And sometimes when they're standing there with a smile and hand you a bulletin, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about them other churches that come in and just snatch a bulletin and leave it laying here after the service. There is work and effort that has gone into that. Yes. Amen? Yes. And without that, and if you don't think it's so, I think since I've been here in two years, we had a couple of Sundays where we didn't do bulletins and boy, my email box was full. Yes. 
Pastor, there was no bulletin in it. But how many times do we thank those individuals when the bulletins are here? Communion volunteers, once a month, the communion volunteers prepare communion. They put it on the tables. They make sure that we can observe that holy ordinance that God has given to the church. Um, and then they stay afterwards and wash the communion trays and put everything away. And we come and we take communion on Sunday, on first Sunday, and hardly give a thought to the fact that somebody was behind all of that. Amen. Connect desk. Uh, ensuring that members and visitors stay connected to events and activities and services and opportunities that the church offers. For those of you who don't know where the Connect Desk is, it's right out in the front entrance of the worship center and, and stop by there sometimes. And again, just to say thank you to the people who keep that going. Custodial and maintenance. I told you we got to come up with some better titles, but custodial and maintenance, the team of volunteers who continuously keep this campus clean. Notice I said this campus, not just this building, but the entire campus, six buildings on this campus that keep this building clean or these buildings clean from week after week after week after week. Um, uh, finance team encounters weekly. Um, we gave offerings this morning. Somebody has to collect that. Somebody has to count that. Somebody has to ensure that it's deposited into the account. Somebody has to give an account of what's coming into the church. And every week we have finance team encounters who go in and make sure that that happens. Often missing great portions of all of this so they can be back there counting the money and making sure that it gets to its designated places. I'm just going through these things to show you, and I don't want to leave any out to show you, and I still got two minutes because it's not 11 o'clock. It's a miracle Sunday, but I just want us to see what makes this church work. HR and personnel committee, these people uh, oversee the hiring process of every paid staff member that comes into this church. That includes background checks, uh, resume checks, sitting oftentimes after hours for interviews and so forth, and nobody knows what they do. Do, but they do that. Um, IT department. We have an IT department now of one. It used to be uh, Bill Church and Tom Preston and some others. Now it's pretty much Bill Church. But when something goes wrong with our computers or our technology center, somebody has to come and deal with that. And I told you my degree of technology, if the computer ain't working, I slap it on the side. If it don't work, put a tag on it. It's dead. But thank God for people like Bill Church who come in and make sure that our IT is up to snuff. Library, sister, um, and I, I don't want to start naming names because I know I did like some others that I didn't name all the names, but you'll see that when they get the certificate. But we have a library here, Sister Conway and Sister Kathy Israel. Uh, I don't even know if many of you even know we have a library on campus. We have a library on campus with plenty of good Christian material. If you want to read some personal things, if you want some Bible studies, if you want something to build up, they have that library. And not only, it's not just a room with books in it, they have taken the time to categorize and catalog so they know what's there. And, and that's something that we can certainly uh, start to use and participate in more as a church. Different ministries, Sister Sheila, brother, buddy, I'm sorry, like I say, we got to come up with some better, I don't want to say meal ministry or kitchen ministry, but but meals. <laughs> Amen. You can smell it wafting through the doors even as we speak. Those who uh, prepare food every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time we have a special event, whether it's a funeral, uh, ordination, uh, a special event like Christmas, they're the ones that make sure that there's food in the kitchen. And so we thank God for them. The nursery, I already touched on that. Those who care and provide guidance for our babies and toddlers. Children ministry, those who care uh, for the children in this church. Uh, Sister Priscilla has done an excellent job coming up with curriculums and activities and events. Uh, and they also are fed. And so that's our children's ministry. Men's ministry, which includes men's night out, uh, the men's breakfast, um, uh, the men's Bible studies, all of those things fall under the men's ministry. The quilter. Uh, Sister Kathy Israel leads a group of quilters, and they come and they make quilts. And you say, well, what in the world is that? And why do you call it a ministry? Because every time we have a sick and shut-in or a terminally ill person, they make sure that that individual gets a hand, a one-in-a-kind quilt to comfort them and just to show them that Grace Place Church loves them. And many of you all here have been the recipients or your family members and loved ones have been recipients of those quilts. Security. We have a security team. I'm not going to call them out because then you'll know who they are, although some of them stick out like a sore thumb because they try to look incognito, but security just can't help but look like security. But we have a security team here at the church to ensure that while you're here enjoying all of this, the church is safe on every area from the parking lot to the various 
entryways into the church. Our seniors ministry, we have a ministry to uh, build up and encourage and, and show our seniors that we love them. By the way, seniors, because we're eating today and because Thanksgiving is next week, we will not have a meal this particular month of November, but we got a really exciting event coming up for you in December, so hang on and stay tuned. Teachers, anybody who has taught in this church, whether it's the a.m. or p.m. hour of power, if you're not coming out to Sunday school or Bible study, you're missing out because we're having a good time. And, and so we thank everyone who has taught a class. Uh, trustees, our trustees are individuals who are charged with holding on to uh, not only the property deeds and so forth, but also overseeing, in, in a sense, the fiduciary responsibilities of the church. They are the people who sign off on the, 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 the mortgage loan and so forth, and so we owe them a gratitude of debt. Our women's ministry, hell, hell, she hollered for me last week, so I'm a week before last, so I'm a holler. That was last week, so I'm a holler for her. Woo! I can't do it as loud as she did. Um, I can't hit those decibels that she does. Um, but but uh, hit, uh, my own wife uh, leads up our women's ministry here. Um, youth and young adult ministry by uh, uh, Sister Lana and Brother P Travis. Travis is out of town. Sister Lana is here today. They have done an excellent job in a short time that they've been here working with our youth and building that ministry up and edifying and strengthening and discipling our young people. And then we have our staff. Uh, those are all of the paid positions, the GP administrative assistant, the GP financial clerk, uh, children's uh, uh, ministry, uh, our nursery care providers, our musical director, and our media specialist. Um, and then we have some other areas, because I said we tried to cover everything, and I didn't even know what titles to give these, but uh, we, we've got uh, our office volunteers who come in the office throughout the week, giving up their own time for not a dime, not a nickel. They don't ask for a thing. It is just their labor of love and their work of faith. They come in the office, Miss Kathy and Miss the other Miss Kathy, and so many. I don't want to start naming names because I'll forget people, but they come in and they just do whatever it is that they can do in the office, whether it's work on bulletins, whether it's help file, whether whatever it is they come in, uh, they send out birthday cards and uh, sympathy cards and so forth. Uh, we had some working on serve and keeper. Uh, we have a group of people or individuals in the church that are responsible for I feel like Vanna White, that are responsible for the holiday displays. Every Christmas, every Easter, uh, uh, Veterans Day, and so forth, we have people who, out of the kindness of their heart, beautify our church. And, and again, we, we see these things, and, and, and we the lobby out there has been transformed in the last two months. I don't know if anybody even paid any attention to it, but the lobby outside has been transformed. There are people who say, we want to, this is our labor of love. This is our work of faith. And so again, we want to acknowledge you today. Uh, grounds crew those that come up and cut the grass and cut the hedges and make sure that the church campus on the outside is clean. And then we have uh, some, some future ministries that are already in the process. Community Bible study, uh, Sister Celeste Page is going to be uh, overseeing that uh, in his image ministry by uh, 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 Samantha Roy and Sister Dinah. Uh, is, are there in the process of trying to get that ministry out. And so again, if there's anything else that I missed, it's not because we intentionally tried to overlook anybody. Um, and, and I'm sure I could have stayed up here till 12 o'clock. I've done it preaching before, so you shouldn't. 